you're never one more than one degree uh, away from Ethelbert Miller uh, here in Washington, D.C. He is the quintessential Washingtonian. He is a friend. He is a mentor. He's someone I look, I've, I've looked up to for many, many years. I'm so honored and excited, really, to call him a friend. Um, to, as someone that I've relied on for so many years, he is, of course, the uh, chairman for the Institute of Policy Studies that I'm on the board of as well. It's a great think tank here in Washington. Ethelbert makes it really enjoyable to be on that board, I have to tell you. Having a poet run a think tank is what this world needs. And it really does make a difference. Um, he is also the founder, and I'm, I'm sorry, the director of the African American Resource Center at Howard University, one of the founders of the Humanities Council of Washington, D.C. This man has done more for Washington and the culture of this city than any other person that I know of, and I can honestly say that. And he's a great poet. Hey, how can you go wrong? Thank you so much. Please, uh, I'm going to give you the microphone so you don't have to hold, the, hold this. Thank you, Ethelbert. Okay, if you can take you. us home. Okay, thank you very much. Um, when Gwen invited me to participate in this program, um, I was deeply honored because I had been reading Bob Herbert's work um, in the New York Times, and I felt he was the one person who got it, that um, we have a lot of discussion about the middle class, but we really need to talk about poverty. Uh, many of us are probably one paycheck away from poverty. Um, we know many people are unemployed. And I felt he was doing something in the tradition of, of Senator Wellstone and, and Robin Kennedy and Michael Harris, and I thought that was very really important. The last poem in this book is an outgrowth of my friendship with, with uh, a person who's very dear to me, Mike, who is a fiction writer who lives in Korea. Um, she visits me every um, summer. Um, we've been talking a lot about life. Um, she's a Korean adoptee. She's always searching for one's mother and father. And I've learned a lot about life from her. And then I was also looking at what was happening in our society as a whole and bringing it back to Martin Luther King and talking about the beloved community, uh, which is so important in terms of what we should strive for. And so these poems that are in this book is, is based on that. It's based on that belief, and it's based on those friendships you know, that I have with people. Uh, when I look at Andy Shalon, Marjan Shalon here, um, they're very much part of that. And I think that what we're creating here is, on one sense, a, a sacred place, on another sense, a community, but on a third sense, uh, a, a movement. And, and this is very important. I believe that the title of this poem, Fix Something That Is Broken, is key. I'm at Howard University, so I'm reminded that every time I step on that campus, <laughs> there is something that is broken that needs to be fixed. And so um, I try to do my little bit, you know, and, and sometimes it's just moving something, picking up a piece of trash or, 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 or um, propping a door open that, that's, that's broken. But if you think about this in terms of a social change, uh, it begins with the individual, what you as one person can do, but it doesn't stop there. You have to transform yourself, and then you have to transform some of these institutions. And so this is the short poem, Fix Something That Is Broken. When you rise, fix something that is broken. It will make a difference between yesterday and today. Prepare your heart before you love. Touch another person with hands that whisper, one kiss. And let me just repeat something again. Repair your heart before you love. You can think about that tonight. Many of our hearts are broken, and that's why we don't have the capacity to love. And if we don't repair our hearts, we'll never reach the beloved community.